So um, this is an Ask Me Anything. Thank everybody for joining. Um, if you have questions, just shoot them into the chat. We're we're going to read from that. And then I have also got um, uh, a few that people have sent in before, or really common questions that people ask that we'll go over too. Um, at any time, please, 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 we want this to be open. So ask anything that you'd like. The great thing about an ask me anything is you can get questions answered that you probably wouldn't ask in an interview with no judgment. We're just, and we're not going to call out your name or anything like that. So that you're quite, you know, anybody would ever know what you're asking. Um, so we truly, truly, truly mean ask me anything. So we have two wonderful guests today. I'm Emily Lair. I'm not a guest. I'm going to moderate. You might see me looking back and forth, reading questions. Um, we have the wonderful Brittany Gibson, and she is the territory manager of hygiene support and Help me because you just moved, so I get confused. Where are yeah, you? <laughs> so, so previously Texas, Oklahoma, now Arkansas, Louisiana. Nice, nice. And we have Lauren, and she is a dental hygienist. Uh, when it's not snowing, you can uh, introduce yourself. <laughs> explain a little bit about that. <laughs> Hi, I'm Lauren Rakenna. Um, I am a hygienist here in Arkansas. We are currently experiencing 10 inches of snow, which is very unusual for Arkansas. So I've been in the house for about three days. It's very cold and uh, I have a toddler. So um, <laughs> it's been a little a little fun and a little, little hectic, but we're making it. Um, yeah, so <laughs> very cool. it's definitely different. <laughs> So I'll, um, I'll start with a few questions and you guys feel free to add as much as you'd like to add. Um, the first thing I always like to ask is, you know, we're dental hygienists, we're, we're a profession of choice. So for you, Brittany, what made you choose Aspen Dental? Okay, this is always one of my favorite questions to answer <laughs> because as a dental hygienist too, now is going on 11 years that I've been in dentistry. I swore I would never work for a corporate, <laughs> a corporate dental office. And I love that I got to eat those words. And it was actually by Faith and Lauren who started working for Aspen. And I, at the time, was in private practice and, you know, wanted to move back closer to home from Tennessee to Arkansas and decided to take that, that chance it was a little rocky at first, just, you know, getting accustomed to the autonomy that you have as a hygienist, which speaks volumes, but coming from private practice and being told you have to order this, you have to do it this way, you have to watch those seven millimeter pockets. So now I had the autonomy to make those decisions alongside the partnership of the dentist. It, it has been phenomenal and I could never see myself working anywhere else. That is so cool. I absolutely love what you say about eating your words because I feel like we've all done that. <laughs> I was the same when I left hygiene school. I thought, oh, you know, that's the big uh, DSO or corporate world. I, I'm not going to be interested in that. But for the same reasons that you're describing, it's been the best decision I've ever made, plus the trajectory. There's a lot there for hygienists. So um, I, I always say I love being proven wrong, and this is one of my favorite <laughs> cases of being proven wrong. So really, really good point. And it sounds like Lauren, you had it figured out right away. So oh, yeah. You know, oh, yeah. profession of choice, what made you choose Aspen? Um, so I made a move from Tennessee to Arkansas after I met my husband on Tinder online. Um, we got married and moved here. And I left my other office without a job. Like I walked out last day, I had no job. I was like, I have a month to find somewhere to, you know, to work. I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm a newlywed and I'm going to go live with my in-laws for a couple of months, you know, with my new husband. And, and so I had read a lot of things about Aspen, a lot of good and a lot of bad. I did my homework. I came from not a, I wouldn't call it a DSO as much. Um, I mean, there were like 12 offices but I didn't have the autonomy that Brittany was talking about. It was, oh, they don't want to do perio, just polish and floss and send them on their way. Or, you know, it doesn't matter that they just had a knee replacement or just, just do whatever, make them happy. And, you know, of course, I thought that was the way that it was supposed to be. Like, I, I didn't know otherwise. And so I decided to apply for Aspen because obviously I liked what they offered as far as, 
this is what we expect, da 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 So I just applied, and really what got me on was, her name's Juliana McCurry. She was my TNA test um, at, prior to the switch, and I literally had an hour and a half conversation with her, and I was able to speak candidly, and she asked me questions, and I said, what about this situation? What about this situation? And then she even brought things to my attention that I didn't realize were happening that I didn't have to deal with. And um, I've never felt like I've had to give up being a hygienist in the sense of going with what's right, doing what's ethical, doing what's right for the patient. And I also love the fact that, you know, not everyone has, is able to have access to care. And that for me is a huge thing because access to care is, you know, it's a, it's a big problem in some places in America. And knowing that these patients are driving three hours. Oh, Miss Lauren, I drove three hours to see you. I read these reviews online. They said you were the best. I mean, I've had these interactions before, you know, and it's just wonderful because I, I'm able to talk to the patient and, and, and learn about them. And we, we end up being family, you know, just because they see me so much and they remember me. And I, I trained, uh, I was training with a hygienist in Hot Springs uh, before I was coming back to Little Rock. And she said, do all your patients hug you? Is that pretty normal? <laughs> and I said, yeah, they all hug me. So um, I just really liked with Aspen that I can, I can be a hygienist and I can, I have control over my schedule and I can spend the time that I need with my, my patients. I don't have to say, oh, well, it's for, been 45 minutes. You have to go. I got someone else, you know? So I, I love that I'm able to just do hygiene and treat people like people and do what they need what's best for them which is why I got into hygiene yeah nobody got I always say that you know hygienist hygiene is a good career but people go into hygiene because they're givers and carers it's mm -hmm. it's just such an intimate position where you're really um in somebody's personal space all day long and mm -hmm. that really takes a giving personality nobody goes in it to to rush people through and and not give them care that they need so I love hearing that that was utmost of your, of importance to you. Mm -hmm. um, and that's kind of what you were looking for and you found, which is really, really cool. So I love, we found out why you guys came to Aspen, which is super exciting. Love hearing that. Now I'm going to take you way back, although you can also use, I'm sure you both have trained, so you can use that experience too, because I can't expect you to remember three, four or five years. <laughs> so um, Brittany, I'll start out with you. What, what do you like most? Can you describe the training process at Aspen for like a brand new dental hygienist? What could they expect from us? And, um, you know, your favorite part of it? Yeah, for sure. So I would definitely say support, hands down support. Mm -hmm. I always use the analogy of when I'm interviewing a potential candidate with us that we're not gonna just throw you in there to sink or swim you're gonna have continual support, whether it be from someone in my role of hygiene clinical support or it be a seasoned hygienist who you're actually gonna train with. Um, it's paid training. It's two, you know, at least two weeks long where you are, again, you're not thrown in, you're able to shadow and follow that seasoned hygienist who show, kind of shows you the ropes. Cause again, you know, like I mentioned from the beginning, you know, it was a little rocky when I first joined Aspen because you have now again all of that autonomy and so really being able to see like how a hygienist does that successfully and you know I think that the support hands down is probably my favorite about it um, and now you know thanks to COVID we actually have virtual um, hop which is where the hygienist integrate that two weeks of training virtually with our learning and development team and other new hygienists across Aspen Nation to um, be able to build those relationships with one another so that they can lean on them for support as well, as well as our VPs of hygiene. So we have Maureen and Jan who are just a chat box away to be able to help those new hygienists be successful as well and provide all the education that they need. I love that. And for, for those who don't know, uh, Maureen and Jan are our directors of dental hygiene, East and West Coast. And I love that for every new hygienist, they are a big part of that training. So they'll be on virtually with you and they, they really get to know the trainees. Um, it's important that they're that important to us 
and we want to make uh, everyone really enjoy their experience that, you know, people at a vice president's level get on and make sure that they get to know them, which that's really, really, I think that's very special because I do happen to know how hard it is to get a meeting with them because they're very busy. So you guys are um, really the most important thing that can happen is a new hire for them. And that's really cool that we know that those new people need care. So that's really cool. Um, Lauren, talk to me about um, the, the, do you do training? I imagine you do, right? Um, the, yeah, I have a couple times. What, what is the process like? Um, and what do you enjoy about offering training to um, new people with us or new hygienists with us? I really enjoy training because honestly, I learned so much from them, not just they learn from me. Because with hygiene, like, you know, just like technology we were talking about earlier, it's always changing and not always in a bad way, but we're always moving in a forward direction so that we can help people. And I, I love when they come in and I always like to get them a little gift um, because who doesn't like presents and, you know, stuff, cute paper to take notes on and, and things like that. But I always love just learning from them as well, because sometimes I'm like, I never thought about it that way. Or you hear about their experiences. And so you, you learn like, I should try this that way. It's not perceived that way. Or, you know, maybe talk with them about this. And I, when they first come in and we start training the first day, I just like them to just hang out and get to know the flow of the office. And some days they're like, I really just want to clean some teeth today and kind of see how it goes. Or I want to treat some perio today. And I'm like, oh, that's great. You know, but don't feel like you have to take it on. But I, I kind of let them take it at their own pace because then they're more comfortable generally. But we end up all, I always end up being friends with them. And we always end up like, how are you doing? Hey girl. You know, it's always back to the hugging um, with our mask on, obviously. But um, yeah, I, I really enjoy like the, uh, yeah, every time well, I'm from a huge family of huggers. Like that's just what we do. And, uh, and talkers, we're loud talkers and big huggers. So, but I definitely just learning from each other is always awesome because you're, you never, it also keeps you humble in that sense, because you're like, you know, I'm, I'm doing great. I'm doing all this. And how many people are like, oh, I could be doing more. What more could I be doing? And not because someone else is telling me to do more because I, I'm getting, I get the hunger to do more because I have all of this support and I have all these things at my fingertips. When you talk about the bridge is where we get all of our supportive stuff at. And it's like, boom, it's right there. CEs, boom, right there. This is how we're going to implement things. How are you doing? So just like the all in inclusive, everything is just, I'm really, really enjoying it. I'm not going to go anywhere else. It's been four years. I'm still here. <laughs> That's what I always say. I'm like, I've got my retirement set. I'm ready to go. This is how I'm going to do it. <laughs> I really like that though. You really described, um, I think a big part of Aspen is that we have that open feedback loop where we talk mm -hmm. to each other, right? So, you know, if somebody sees me working, I'll always say like, hey, let me know if there's anything that you notice that could be better. You know, uh, if mm -hmm. somebody sees this meeting, I'll even say, hey, are there any questions that you would have asked that I didn't ask? Because it always helps us grow. And I think that's the big thing with Aspen is we're always looking to grow together, right? And always looking for ways to do even better than we did before. So. I absolutely love that. And speaking of better than we did before, I have to go there. Um, our technology is like amazing. Um, and I know asking you to pick just a couple is, is hard, but uh, Brittany, can you walk us through some of your favorite technologies? And I think there's a new and exciting one that I hear, or actually two new and exciting ones coming around the corner. So tell me what we've got and um, what kind of training we offer with those. Yeah. So it's funny that you say this because I actually just nominated Lauren's office to be a part of the next pilot and created perio charting that, um, you know, we just started piloting the second set of 10 offices across Aspen Nation. And um, starting in March, we're going to be rolling out 100 offices. So we like to stay up to date with all of the technology. So obviously voice activated period charting, who doesn't want that as a hygienist? It just makes your life so much easier. 
And even though, you know, being a hygienist with Aspen, you know, we are a team. So our dental assistants are always there to help out with perio charting. They're busy. They have one of the hardest jobs. I'll say it every single day. So the fact that we're going to be able to actually take that off of them and help our hygienists be a little bit more independent is phenomenal. And the patients still get the experience of hearing the numbers. It's going to be great. So that, like I said, that's one of my favorite currently. Of course, I think the second most favorite would be our iTero digital health scanners, where we actually are able to educate our patients on their oral health by showing them a 3D scan of their teeth. So it's the first time ever that patients have been able to see their teeth as a 3D object versus, you know, a 2D image of a radiograph. So those are probably my two favorites. And, you know, we're all always on to the next best thing. So really staying up to date with technology by working for dental support organizations is definitely one of the one of the pros. Mm -hmm. Yes. You know, I, when, when I started, I, I thought technology was lip service. I'll be honest. I thought, oh, people say technology because I, I'd worked for several practices and they would all feel like they were tech savvy, but I would know about all this technology that wasn't being okay. implemented. I feel like Aspen teaches me about technology I didn't know existed. Right. Oh yeah. And we use it in a different way. You know, a lot of people would just use those scanners to uh, do ortho only or maybe crowns only. I know in private practice mm -hmm. that was set aside for the dentist and I couldn't touch it. And it was like, that's the expensive machine. Don't mm -hmm. touch it. And here it's like, well, we want all of our <laughs> patients to benefit from them for, from, from it. And it's no cost for them to get this amazing view for their mouth. So I think that's so cool and a different way of looking at it than I would have um, looked at or that I had seen before. So really Yeah, cool. and another thing that I was just gonna add is that we don't just throw it into the office and be like, okay, y'all, like, here you go. Figure it out. Nice piece of technology. No, like we set up, of course, with COVID things have gone virtually, but we set up virtual lift sessions where the team comes together and they do virtual training. Um, another thing that I can think of too is like the um, the CBT scans that we're implementing yep. as well. So they do training with that. With the voice activated period charting, they actually do like a weekly session where the hygienists are able to do the training. And then once they've implemented it into the office, they're able to provide that constant feedback so that, you know, with it being, mm -hmm. they're able to make those tweaks and make those improvements. So that way that when it comes to the rest of Aspen Nation implementing it, that um, we're ready to go. I love that. And I love like um, you're describing how they're gonna try it out first. That's mm -hmm. a really, really cool thing about being kind of a, a larger organization is whenever we try technology, it first goes into a smaller group so we can make sure it works right, make sure we're ready to go, make sure that the teams are liking it. Cause there's nothing like buying voice activated perio and it turns out they would have liked a different brand. This isn't quite doing what they thought. So we all mm -hmm. try it out first before we implement it which is really, really cool. Um, I think that's a unique uh, advantage we have. I, I remember working in private practice and I say this all the time. Um, my doc tried so hard. He did. He was a really nice person and he tried to be tech savvy. So what he would do is go to the dental meetings where everybody's selling something and mm -hmm. like whoever was the suavest with them, he's like, that's the technology I'm buying. And sure as rain, every year we would have something new to put in basement storage that we never used <laughs> from 3D glasses <laughs> to uh, we had a camera that like only could work on a, on this one screen that you couldn't upload into the patient's information or anything. We had wonderful, terrible technology like that. So it's really nice to try it out. Um, and that's kind of an advantage that we have that you don't really see in other places. Um, Lauren, I know you've probably in your years with Aspen done a ton of different trainings for technologies. Which mm -hmm. training have you done um, that you enjoyed the most? And can you just talk a little bit about it? Because sometimes our trainings are a little unique. Um, honestly, I really, I mean, I've, I've enjoyed all of them so much. 
the most recent one is the iTero. But honestly, I was with Aspen before we were digital. And I really liked our switch over to full digital charting because it it took a minute for me to let me go grab the chart. Oh wait, no, I don't need the chart. I need the computer. Oh wait, I need, you know. And so it was it was definitely nice seeing how it was implemented because um uh they would kind of implement like what did you like about this what did you not like about this how is this working for you and we would come in and like there's updates you know ever so often that we would come in and it was like oh they fixed that problem that we were talking about oh we're doing this and so it's really easy to navigate that's the other thing with there's things that i i hate about other dental programs when they're like you know it's 20 clicks to get to this one thing with ours it's like oh click this tab here it is this is what I was looking for and if I right click I can do all of these tasks with it so um, I really enjoyed learning this and seeing the change um, and learning how to implement it and of course when you're first learning those technologies it's, it's super slow let's be realistic but now that you're getting it switched over you know, more into your implementation, it, it gets a lot easier. But I think my favorite two things have definitely been the iTero and honestly, the oral ID. That has been a huge thing for me. So uh, uh, early stage protection and precaution is, is very near and dear to my heart. So um, I'm all about it. I'm like, we got to do it. We got to do this. <laughs> You know, that that is so true. Um, there's two ways that we're going to save lives in dentistry. Well, long term lives with a lot of uh, things that perio causes and that we're helping to but taking blood pressure, checking for oral cancer. Those are real immediate risks. Mm -hmm. You do those two things and you'll probably end up saving someone's life. Um, so that's that's really cool. I'm glad that you take it so seriously and and really the Aspen Nation does. And it's not like it's not a moneymaker. It's definitely mm -hmm a service to our patients and that's and I love that that with it not being you know financially driven it is very much from the heart and I would say that's true with everything that we do our big mm -hmm. thing is do what's right by the patient everything else will follow so just do the right thing and the next right mm -hmm. thing and the next right thing for the patients and, and it follows and every time comes into place and that's when I look at it that way, that's always what like clears my head when I think about um, like how I'm going to design, um, you know, if I'm working in the office, how I would design changes in that office. I'm like, just lead with the patients. That's all you ever have to do. And, and that's what really Aspen tells us to do too, which is really something nice to nice to have for sure. Um, speaking of kind of the business aspect, um, do you got, do you get to Lauren um, how do you determine what kind of instruments and things that you're going to have in your practice? So initially in the beginning, I just ordered, I, I kind of just used what was there for a couple of weeks, just because I wanted to see like, I'm not very hard to please when it comes to instruments because it's sharp and I can detect with it, I can get it done, you know. Um, but after a, a while, I was kind of like, I'm noticing these are too heavy and these are not and these are not as easy to ergonomically hold and things like that over time I just kind of would order like a couple instruments here and a couple here to try them out and honestly I mean I would just talk to my other hygiene friends that work for us and I'm like what are you guys using like I'm having this but also like we would have like our hygiene meetings and they would have things there and say have you guys tried this how is this working for you and like as a group our territory would come together and you get all these ideas and learn from other people and like I am huge on American Eagle instruments right now because they're light they're easy to use and I can get in there and I can do my job so much more efficiently and quicker and it's honestly it's more comfortable for the patients as well which is really important to me so I uh as far as like insurance and things like that, just using stuff in the past and kind of just implementing a little at a time until I know exactly what I like and then I'm able to order and get whatever I need. Yeah, get what you need. Are you using the Ever Edges? Are those the American Eagles? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, those are life changing. So Aspen I now has like a get what... special pack with uh, with them. They have like a, a, um, a healthy mouth pack and then a periodontal pack and my drawer is full of them full of them <laughs> <laughs> those things are life-changing 
And, and that's what I like is that we can order what we want. I remember, I mean, it's kind of shameful now that I think about it, but just being so intimidated to mm. ask for um, the instruments I needed in private practice uh, because there really wasn't any mm -hmm. system where I was ordering. I had to go through and get approval from the person that writes my paycheck mm -hmm. <laughs> to get something new. And so, I mean, there was always like a bit of feeling uncomfortable uh, doing that mm -hmm. and like, oh, well, I'd be judged because the other hygienist hasn't asked for anything. Or crossing your fingers and waiting for it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I just like that you can run it like your own business. And like when I need mm -hmm. to purchase things for my business, I will do that. So um, mm -hmm. speaking of which, Brittany, can you talk to us about the scheduling and how you determine how much time you get for patients? Yeah, so again, as a hygienist with us, you have the autonomy to set your own time preferences. So whenever you, you know, come on board with us, you sit down with your doctor and your office manager and you set those times and they're always adjustable. So it's not set in stone. You know, I always tell our new grads, you know, we get it. We know what it was like to be a new hygienist coming out of school, especially with COVID as well, you know, when we first came back from COVID, we adjusted those times for PPE changes and all of those wonderful things. And so as, as a new grad, you know, they're able to say, hey, look, it's gonna take me, you know, an extra 15 minutes or, hey, I don't know how much time I need. You know, I'm not used to just being able to do a profi from start to finish and not having to have, you know, 5 million checks in between there. Oh my gosh, and not have a teacher stand every. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. So just being able to, you know, have the autonomy to build your schedule. And that's another thing, you know, so alongside with your time preferences, we, you know, guide you as support and operational support guide you as far as, you know, your schedule, because we understand that if you're seeing 10 to 12 profies a day, that you're going to burn out quickly and you're going to be exhausted. Mm -hmm. And so we help you be able to build a good schedule where you have a, a work-life balance and you're not going home exhausted at the end of the day. We want you here long term. Yeah. <laughs> so that's definitely important to make sure that you don't burn yourself out. And it's nice to have that check and balance from somebody like Brittany or your TMHS to help you with that. Because I know for me, and I, and I don't mean to make it all about my experience, but when I was in private practice, Again, I would feel the pressure to do things, not because other people were telling me to, but because there was nothing telling me to back off. Do you know what I mean? There was no, mm -hmm. I'm kind of a driven person. And so if I did it this day, then I'll do it tomorrow. Then I'll do it the next day. And the next thing you know, it's the regular thing. And there wasn't really someone to talk to about that. And so that's where the TMHS support is really nice because you can literally talk about how you're feeling at work. And they can look through stuff and try to help you make that business make sense for yourself so that you're not burning out. Um, that's, a, that's a serious thing in our, um, in our field. I mean, you hear about it all the time, how to prevent burnout. And to Brittany's point, uh, a schedule that makes sense can help people with that. And Lauren, you've been with us for a while. Uh, talk, see, I'm, I'm, we were just talking about how when you hang out with people from the South, you start to get an accent. I know, right? <laughs> You guys, you guys have gotten it. <laughs> You're welcome to any time. <laughs> you've been us for a while. Um, you've been with us for, a, and I love the accent, by the way. I'm not making fun. Of it. I'm jealous. Um, you've been with us for a while. What What do you use to help yourself um, not get to that burnout stage that's so famous right now in hygiene? You see it all over the hygiene boards. What do you do to help that not happen to you? So I have learned my limits and I've learned to um, delegate and that has been like my biggest challenge for a really long time. I'm, I'm very um, altruistic at heart. Like I have to take care of everything. I'm the oldest of three girls. Like it's always big sister, like got to get this done kind of thing. And so learning to like delegate and ask for help has been a huge thing for me so like you know when I wasn't um <laughs> there comes your helper and yeah <laughs> he just wants to be a part of the, <laughs> the group um so prior to like in private practice you know it was like you didn't talk to the assistants and 
they didn't bother you and you didn't bother them and, and that kind of thing. And so being able to know my limits and we have like a, a schedule limitations that I've really learned to appreciate um, because it, it makes sure that you don't have too many profies in one day, you know, make sure that you don't have too many of this in one day and that you have the time allotted that you need. And also I'm able to adjust the times. Um, those have just been my small key things that I've really enjoyed um, learning and using because it's helped me not run around crazy and sweating and, and breathing really deeply. Cause let's, let's face it. I have a one and a half year old. I'm not 20 anymore. So <laughs> I've learned to, Luke, please stop. Um, Luke is famous. He just wants his tail in the picture. Um, just <laughs> learning to delegate and knowing my limits has been a huge factor for me. And honestly, um, I'm very, I'm very um, forthcoming when I, I ask my OM, I ask Brittany, literally directly, I say, what do you need from me? What is it that you see I need to change? The same thing for my office manager. What I... Um, after a new patient consult, I'm like, did they understand everything? Did they have questions? Do you, you know, and she'll tell me like, you know, they were, no, they knew all the information that, that you had gone over with them or no, they were confused about this. And so like, if there's any of that, they'll come and get me. So just honestly, just asking and knowing my limits and delegating has been like key in helping with my scheduling. I absolutely think that you just hit some critical points there. That's <laughs> a feedback loop that we talk about. You know, I, you don't get that in dentistry. It's just, you work with such a mm -hmm. small group. Uh, typically mm -hmm. it's like seven or eight people and there's nobody kind of helping them either. So nobody's really learning new things. This was my private practice experience, right? So you really have the knowledge of those eight people and nobody's coming in or out. So the knowledge doesn't grow and grow and grow. But to your point, when you're in an office, you know, that office manager has people that help them and has resources mm -hmm. and resources that they go to and their continued development. So they're offering you new things that they're getting from all those people. You have your territory manager and your hygiene team um, that you're mm -hmm. growing from. So it's like this constant, that's, that's what I would say like was so different about Aspen is you come in and it's like, all of a sudden I'm growing, I'm changing. I'm not just like thinking, I'm actually making mm -hmm. changes because I'm mm -hmm. seeing more than I've ever seen before. Um, and, and that's something that's very unique. So I, I love that you pointed that out. Um, Brittany, what do you do? I know you said you help them out with their schedule, but if you have a hygienist that's experiencing that burnout or is telling you that, what advice do you give them? Well, first of all, you know, I think just having an open line of communication because we know that lives change and, you know, what may have been okay whenever they first started with us five years ago may not be okay now. So, um, you know, for example, I was in an office last week where, you know, I knew that the hygienist was wanting to continue her education and get another degree and is actually looking at going into dental school. So we had the conversation of, you know, is five days still okay for you? Because I do have their best interests at heart when it comes to that work-life balance. And I can only imagine working full-time and going to school full-time. So, you mm -hmm. know, making sure that I'm doing that pulse check and that they feel good. So if they come to me and say, hey, look, I just feel overworked. I feel like I don't have a work-life balance. Okay, well, let's talk about it. Do you maybe need to cut back a day? Do we need to cut back two days, what would be your solution to that? Because I do take that into consideration when, you know, making sure that the hygienists are happy and that aren't experiencing that burnout. I love mm -hmm. that. So you'll work with them where they're at and what they want um, within reason, of course, but. Especially to coming back from experience. COVID, coming back from COVID, you know, it's not at all black or white, you know, you don't mm -hmm. have to full time, you know, I, I know that hygienists now more than ever, you know, want that time to, you know, maybe it's their kids, you know, doing virtual school, they can't commit to full time. So maybe they can just work part time. So being, being accommodating to that and understanding, um, I think goes a long way. Oh, that's mm -hmm. really, really, really important, especially when things have changed as they have and, and so mm -hmm. much for, for hygienists, especially and women, especially, which mm -hmm. many are hygienists 
or many hygienists are women. Not many women are hygienists. <laughs> we got it. We got it. <laughs> we got those. Yes, that work-life balance is really important. I'm telling you, I am in school as well, full-time, and I'm working full-time. Um, I'm not going to dental school, but um, knowing my What are you studying? I'm so um, Healthcare administration. Um, nice. Yeah, so I'm just expanding more on my degree uh, so that I can help more people. And um, having a one-and-a-half-year-old, and I just talked to Brittany, I'm like, I'm thinking like, I think four days are going to be where I need to be. And she's like, all right, let's work on it, you know, and we're working, on it. <laughs> we're working on it, but knowing my, you know, but I'm like, I feel comfortable enough to where I can say that I, I don't feel, you know, like at the moment, I'm like, I just don't, I feel overwhelmed right now. I've definitely been that person. I've been that hygienist and I have had to learn what I can control, what I can control. That is a, another eat my words kind of thing because <laughs> I'm like I want to do it all <laughs> well I think that's where the support really helps too you just have multi-levels of people that you can go to for that so that you don't feel like oh gosh if I say this I'm gonna you know this will be burning the bridge with my employer you know it's not like that we want to know what people want long term and speaking of which do you have an idea what you want to do with that degree are there like certain things at aspen you're looking at or are you still pretty open i'm still pretty open i just want to have the option to i would really really like to work with in recruiting and training i love meeting people and and learning about their experiences and learning from their experiences from whether it's with Aspen or with another office. And, and I'd like to think of myself as a people person, um, even though I'm pretty sure the only reason my husband married me is because I talked him to death. He was like, look, I'll do whatever you want. Just stop talking, you know? And I always make a joke about, you know, badgering my patients to death because I'm just like, how, how are you? How's your birthday? How's your mom doing? Is your sister feeling better? You know, they're like, how do you remember this stuff? You know, so I, I really want to work in recruiting or, or um, you know, training and, and teaching. And I, I really feel like that's my direction of where I'm being called or pulled to. Um, and I'm hoping that's with Aspen um, because I, I don't want to leave Aspen. I love being with Aspen. So, um, well, there's certainly a lot of hygienists in what you've just described. I mean, the recruiting team has tons of hygienists on it. Um, I'm sort of on the recruiting, we're the academic team, but it's similar, and we're all hygienists on the hygiene end, um, and then there are also people in learning and development that are dental hygienists, and then you've got like the specialty, like ortho, which they do do training too, so I would mm -hmm. kind of consider them what you're saying, again, they're dental hygienists, so that's kind of the really cool thing is even things you didn't know existed like a year and a half ago or two years ago, this position didn't exist that I'm in. Mm -hmm. And if I would had written down what I wanted to do in my life, it would have been exactly that. So it's so neat just letting people know at Aspen and like getting experiences. And I'm sure Brittany's doing things to help. We call it bench you or help you expand so that you're ready mm -hmm. to go to that next level. Um, and not, not really level so much, but next oppor different opportunity. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, that I just love that. That's really cool to see where you where you see yourself and to know that if you choose, there's a space for you here for that. So right. um, Brittany, you've seen a lot of uh, changes and you've done some yourself with your career at Aspen. Can you kind of walk us through your career and where you what, what you started doing, what you're doing now, and then what you think might be things that you're, you're even looking at for the future? Oh. <laughs> That's a great question. So, well, I started as a clinical hygienist with Aspen and, you know, I thought always, well, maybe I'll teach dental hygiene one day. And, mm -hmm. you know, when I took that leap of faith with Aspen and learned more about this clinical support role, I'm like, hey, like that's like teaching in, in a different aspect and, you know, getting to support multiple team members whether it be, you know, what we call our PSR, our patient support representative, or maybe it's the office manager, you know, teaching them about what is, what is a profi, you know, what's that code or what is gingivitis or talking with a new grad doctor. So, and also every office is different. So 
after a little over a year, I got promoted into the territory manager of hygiene support, where I relocated to Oklahoma for two years and had the opportunity of supporting at one point 32 offices. I, yes, mm -hmm. so being in a different office each day was really nice as well um, because you have different environments and different personalities and you know where this is going to take me only the good lord knows but you know I I'm very open to it so we'll just see you know maybe it might be moving up into a director of hygiene or like I said I mean who knows you know like you said you know your role didn't exist years ago and, you know, I know that the, the recruiting team is always evolving. I mean, I still learn about new opportunities within the company. We're still creating new opportunities within the company. Mm -hmm. Like you said, ortho support, we didn't have that a few years ago. We are actually in the process of hiring one for our division at this time. So I know that it's only going to continue to grow from here. So we'll see. <laughs> but Oh, you know, I'm, I'm loving the opportunity of now getting to support 23 offices across Arkansas and Louisiana. So that is awesome. I, it's, it's so neat to me though, that it's so hygiene centric. Like when these opportunities open up, I feel like Aspen re in particular versus anything else that I've seen. And I hope that I see more and we've been so successful with this. I hope that other um, groups do the same thing. I, I, I want to see hygiene grow across the world. Like I'm a hygiene advocate. Um, but you can see, um, sorry, I was reading at the same time. Sorry. <laughs> you can see, um, that every time we grow, it's like, where do the hygienists fit in? Not clinically, but for their knowledge, like, um, you know, I think it's, I'm an advocate of higher education, have gone back to school myself, finished a master's for me. But the great thing about Aspen is they really see that that hygiene experience as a true experience as your education. So that hygiene experience with Aspen, they know that you're someone that understands um, autonomy, how to run something um, um, on your own, really and how to grow. So they, they see us as um, almost business leaders, which is really different than I've seen before, but it has worked because, you know, there's always that hygienist in the chair that's like, I have an idea, but at Aspen, it's like, well, then run with your idea. <laughs> What's your idea? Go with yeah, it. Yeah, go so, for it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, when you hear that, Lauren, when you hear uh, running your own business at Aspen, we, we kind of talk about that. What is that, uh, aside from like the clinical autonomy, which is huge, but what does mm -hmm. that mean to you? Like, what, what does that encompass? Um, so I'm able to order the supplies that I need without second guessing. Like, I, I know I need it. You know, I, yes, there's a budget and things like that. But if I, if I need it, I need it and I get it. And, you know, if I, I have the um, control of how much time I get to spend with each patient, that has been a huge thing because, I, I know Mrs. Smith loves to talk and she loves to ask about my child and she loves to tell me what's going on in her life. So I know I'm going to need a little bit more time or this one's a little more sensitive to the instruments and more nervous generally. So I'm going to spend a little more time or this one's pretty easy in and out, you know, so I'm able to control um, when it comes to like the scheduling and the ordering and how much I'm involved, you know. Because there's some people who, who don't want to get overly, superly involved. I mean, and that's, that's okay. It's okay to, to feel that way. But with, um, sorry, he is very, very uh, excited, apparently. But I'm, I'm able to literally just focus on that. And, and I'm not having to worry about all these other things. And, and when I have all of these things at my fingertips, I'm, I'm able to be successful. And I'm able to just treat patients like patients, you know, and I'm like, I have a problem with this. I go to the bridge and I'm like, our bridge is where, you know, we have all of these things at our fingertips. I'm like, what is everyone else doing for this? What is everyone doing for this? Oh, there's a paper for this. It's all right there. I don't have to do any of this back and forth, you know, craziness. So I've really, really enjoyed that part. What part of that too, um, how, what is the relationship like between yourself and the um, 
dentist or dental manager in your in your office because I've noticed that to be the biggest difference um, as far as and that's more clinical but but what's the what what is your relationship like what how do you guys determine uh, what to do clinically um so honestly the the doctor has always been open and candid with me I've worked with a couple of different doctors and and I just will the doctor will go in sometimes and say you know what we're going to see what Miss Lauren has to say first and like um a female dentist I work for she said do you think these are worth you know investing in and I'm like honestly I really don't I mean I'm seeing all these things and I don't see this long-term benefit from this or and the same thing for the doctor that I work now he's like I go in he some reason he goes in before I do for the exam and and I see that he's planned something and you know I do my perio chart and I'm like you know I'll, I'll be right back and I go and talk I'm like hey doc I I've noticed this tooth has like class three mobility and I know we're talking about a partial or a bridge or whatever and he's like oh no that's not good so yeah let's go ahead and change that up you know so we're, I'm I'm able to be very candid with him now of course, not everyone can be that way, and there's always a way to approach it, but I've always been able to be very straightforward and go in and ask directly and be direct and say, hey, did you see this? How do you think we should approach this? Or I'm noticing this with this patient. Can you come in with me and talk with them with me about whatever is going on um, and just really team up with them? And like our office manager for the office, she's like, I never knew how much of an education you had until I started working here because I just thought that I didn't just clean teeth and she was like no offense to you I just didn't know but now she automatically comes to me and she's like hey so there's a patient on the phone and doc's in a root canal and this is going on what do you what do you think what do you know and so my my opinion and my education and my knowledge is valued and I feel valued as an employee because because I'm being heard and um I really, really enjoy it. I really do. You're Is she frozen? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh, no. Emily. Hello? Talking about <laughs> candid photos. <laughs> She's like in this cute, uh, the cute kissy face, at least, you know? Yeah. It works for <laughs> Emily. Hello. Hello. Oh. Sorry. Oh, hi. I got kicked off the internet. You were stuck like this on our screen. Oh no. <laughs> I was like, at least it was, it was a good one. So it sorry. Oh gosh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You can edit that out. What's up? You can edit it out. <laughs> you guys were stuck in a snowstorm and I'm the one that loses the internet. <laughs> you know. Oh Sorry about that, guys. Oh. So where were we at that we just said something that I was excited about because I went. <laughs> oh, oh, you're, um, you're like a clinician. Me. That's what it was. Yeah. You're describing mm -hmm. what it's like to really be a clinician and not be just a order follower um where your your opinion really matters and really for the perio in most aspens most doctors uh in fact all of them that i've seen and Brittany, you can correct me if you see something different they want the hygienist to come up with that uh preliminary perio yep. and i rarely see a change mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's uh, that's that's a big thing i think that's really important to be seen as that clinician rather than like the order taker who just does what you know mm -hmm. what you ordered today um speaking of that Brittany when you think back on your favorite so I, I'll always like to ask this question because people who don't know about Aspen might hear that we're told to sell stuff so Brittany mm -hmm. are you asked to sell things um at Aspen Dental never once no. Um, if anything, I feel like it was opposite coming from private practice. Again, you know, just going back to autonomy. When I worked in private practice, it was you got the oral B and you've got Prevident. And that was it outside mm -hmm. of and expired Prevident. Do what? I said expired Prevident. Oh, yeah, usually. <laughs> yeah. 
which I mean, I love both of those products and I still recommend them to this day, but just not having any, any say in anything past that, you know, it, it was always, I was told what to order, what to do. So Mm -hmm. with coming to Aspen, you know, now we have an array of different products and being able to, you know, make this customized plan for our patients on what's going to benefit this particular patient the most is superior. And I think we've really figured that out. And, you know, again, going back to the training, you're able to learn about all of these different products because, you know, again, from private practice, I, I knew those two products, you know, maybe I had learned about a different product in school, but had never used it and didn't know the benefits and didn't know contraindications, et cetera. So, you know, being able to go through the continuing education, you know, when you're training and learning the ins and outs of all of the products available to you. Um, again, I think that's where we are superior to mm-hmm. support organizations and we figured it out. And, you know, you don't have some set, you know, quota that you have to sell, you know, 10 MI paste a week or whatever. It's just, again, do what's right for the patient and the business part will follow. Yeah. And you could walk into Lauren's office and Brittany when she was in an office and in her office and see different things because it's what they wanted to recommend to their Mm -hmm. patients. Of course, everything is, you know, we make sure that it's like scientifically based. We're not going to, Mm -hmm. you know, no crystal people, but we're not selling crystals. (laughs) (laughs) And our hop and hop is really helpful with those products as well, because all the other hygienists can give their, uh, give their input on different items as well. Like for instance, with I didn't know much about MI paste. And then when I did hop back before COVID, we physically went there you know, they did a CE for us um, while we were there and learned it's great for tissue lubrication for people who have, um, you know, who are on CPAP machines and, and things like that. Like I had no idea. And so now I'm able to recommend it because I see the difference and, you know, and, you know, I've used ClinPro, I've used Prevenin, I've used all these stuff and I prefer, I order what I prefer and patients love it. And it's always there when they need it. That's that makes it a lot easier than, oh, we have this one thing and and mm-hmm. this is the one thing that helps patients when you know there's- well, Why do you like this one thing? So You're much. Like, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> because it's the one thing that. I have. <laughs> yeah, it's the one that they gave me. So no, <laughs> I've never had that situation. So I kind of want to transition as, as we're closing off here into like the culture of Aspen, because if you haven't been with us before, um, it's a little different than what you might see in other places. So I know Lauren, you were just talking about like the fun videos that you do. So um, Mm -hmm. Brittany, what's your favorite Aspen dental culture thing um, that you recognize in your time here? Hmm. (laughs) Cultural thing? I've got a weird one. Do you want me to share my weird one? Yeah. Give Our me an obsession answer. with anything that has Aspen on it, Aspen swag, it's kind of like Aspen swag when you're at Aspen Dental, it's like the biggest thing. When someone sees you in like a new t-shirt, they're like, what? Where's that? Where did you get it? Oh, you have to win this one. Yeah, I'm one of, I've been eyeballing the hoodies that both of you guys have. I'm like, I yes. want them both. It's like the biggest deal. And like for a little bit, Target sold this sweatshirt that said Aspen across it. And I swear we bought it out. <laughs> It wasn't even Aspen. Yes, I think it was, it was Amber and I. No, Amber, Amber was the one when we were on the last Ask Me Anything. Yes, because I She started it. Yes, she did. I see that blue shirt on so many calls. (laughs) I love it. I noticed is people are so proud of their work. Instead of it being like, oh, I got a free t-shirt from work. I'm going to use this to mow the lawn, like, or never wear it. It is like a sense of, it is like a big thing. If you've got something that says Aspen on it, you're showing it off at work. You're showing it off on your uh, meetings. So I think for me that that really speaks to the culture because there is kind of a pri- a sense of pride or a sense of like, I'm part of a team that comes with that. And, um, you know, I, I've worked other places before that give you a t-shirt or a bag that says your name on it. And it's not the same. Like that is a truly an Aspen thing. <laughs> Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
So I think of that, I would say it's really just family oriented, especially, you know, in my role where I'm not just in one office, because of course the office that I was in, you know, we were very family oriented. You know, we would go out to dinner usually once a week. We would do team building things monthly. Mm -hmm. Um, But so being able to be in, you know, 20 to 30 different practices and getting to see that it's not just one office, it's across the board. And even when you're in leadership, you still have that family oriented peers whether it be, you know, clinical support or it be clinical support to operational support. I think it's just, it's amazing that, you know, I can pick up the phone and, and call and ask, you know, a peer, you know, hey, how, how did your kid's test go? Because we talked about it on our call, just being able to be like family. Yeah, I like that. Lauren, you've won a few of our fun things, um, but for you, what's, what are some of the Aspen culture things that, that you enjoy or that have been fun for you? Um, well, like you were talking about videos earlier, I, um, so Oral-B does a contest with Aspen. Um, different offices can make videos on how you present the Oral-B to your patients, and it's not always a serious, like, this is going to get in approximately, it's going to, you know, da, 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 da. it does 50,000 rotate, like, no, it's, it's all about, like, seeing the fun side of it, and so we um, rewrote the lyrics to Truth Hurts to Tooth Hurts um, by Lizzo, and did a competition in our, my office, one from the video that I made, and they used that money to go to Branson for the weekend, and um, it, I unfortunately had the flu, so I couldn't go, but they all got to enjoy it. And I was just happy that they got to enjoy it on my behalf. You know, I was like, no, go ahead. They ordered, they um, rented a cabin and then they went to like the Titanic museum and like all of these fun things, you know, and they had a great time. And I was just, I was glad that I got to be a part of that, you know, and we do like a little fun contest, um, just like a uh, friendly contest between each other and that always gets us a little riled up and like Brittany's like who's gonna win some flag today and I'm like I'm like when are you gonna start giving away coffee that's what I need <laughs> like <laughs> <laughs> but those things like keeping us like really interactive with each other it's not just here's your weekly update here's where your budget is here's how many people we help see you next week you know it's not just like this cut and dry like you know, it's Brittany today asked me like, Hey, did you go to your doctor's appointment today? Like, uh, my husband and I are trying to have another baby. So, but because of the snow, I couldn't go today. She's like, did you go today? You know, I mean, it's just a normal thing now that you ask people like, Hey, how, how was this? How are you feeling? You know, so especially with COVID, you know, we, you know, our, our fellow friends tell us like, Oh, my mom is sick or, you know, like, how are they doing? So, just keep being interactive with everybody has been really nice too. So, um, but definitely the, the videos have been my favorite, I have to say, because like I said, my mother has told me forever, I have no shame. I don't get embarrassed very easily. So, and then like we have, we'll have these huge meetings um, like every year to just kind of like an update on like how things have been going, new things that are coming out, like, and we all get together and Oh, it's so much fun. It is just, it's like a big family reunion every time. <laughs> I love it. Cause those are the hygienists that you don't get to see every day. Cause they're all in different offices yeah. nearby. Yeah. That is really yeah. fun. Cause you get to trade stories and trade ideas. Mm-hmm. And be probably go bowling or whatever, whatever, you, wherever you're at bowling, top golf, uh, eating, <laughs> eating my favorite, you know, <laughs> oh. I found out I didn't have bowlers though. I lost them all on laser tag when I had my meeting. I paid for extra bowling. I should have paid for extra laser tag because that's what they all wanted to do. They wanted to I would be with the laser tag. I hate bowling. <laughs> it's something about putting my hands in the ball. I just, just assumed they'd like out. it. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're no. just wrapping up here. So I'm going to ask one more question um, just to help get us wrapped up. And I think Brittany probably already knows what it is. She's been on a few of these before. So um your one word to describe your experience at Aspen. Brittany, I'm going to have you go first. 
Okay, because, you know, I try to change it up. I think that I would say evolving. It's never stagnant. I love that. How about you, Lauren? Your one word to describe your experience at Aspen. Hmm. Am I being put on the spot? No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> There's honestly, no wrong answer. Honestly, no if I had like two words to pick, one would be like, um, uh, like support, like supportive. I've never had to like go and spend for myself or anything. It's always been somewhere there. And, and honestly, very transparent. And transparency is not always bad. Sometimes transparency is wonderful. And I have really enjoyed that aspect of my job on all sides, from front to back, to support, to the doctor, through and through, all the way. <laughs> Those are great. I think mine's along both of them. It, opportunity, I'm a huge hy hygienist ab advocate. And I just feel like the opportunity here for hygienists, it's endless. There's, there's more than I could even know today. Cause like I said, it could happen in years. So um, thank you guys so much for taking time out of your, out of your personal lives to, to do this. Uh, really, really appreciate it. And um, thank you for those of you that are on. I can't wait to um, shoot you an email and say hi. Um, so you guys, everyone have an awesome evening. You guys stay warm and safe and stay home. It sounds like <laughs> where you're at. <laughs> at this rate, it's going to be for the rest of the week, I assume. Yeah, yeah. it sounds like you're, you're snowed in. It's about to yeah. start again here in a few hours if it hasn't already. Oh, I'm baby say hi. <laughs> oh, hi. Yeah. Okay, you'll We're stay warm with that little tomorrow. one. Yeah. yeah. Say bye. Thanks, Emily, for having us. Thank you so bye. much. Bye. Bye, Luna. Bye. 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 <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you.